Hey guys, and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and at long last, it's time for another species spotlight. Now, I haven't been doing a whole lot of these because I, quite frankly, just haven't been getting new species into The Fish Room. But if you've been watching my channel this past week, you know that I got in some really cool shrimp that I'm super excited about from one of you guys, and that is Caradina mariae, or the tiger shrimp, sometimes also called the super tiger shrimp. And they're a really, really cool species from China. Now, my friend Chris Lokop has given me some underwater footage that I wanted to show you guys, and this footage is from a spot that's a little bit less typical for their collection in that it's more of like a swampy environment, but similar to the more typical mountain streams where they're found, it does have that same super low pH, super low conductivity, and very cool dilute water. Um, the temperatures can range from 19 to 23 degrees Celsius or 66 to 73 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And generally speaking, the general hardness is between one to two degrees. Um, these guys used to be called Cantonensis until about 2014 when they were reclassified and got this new name of Maria E, which coincidentally is named after one of the gentleman's wives, which I think is pretty cool. Now they were identified or differentiated from some of the other type tiger and bee shrimps in that they have very specific vertical striping they have an orange nose or rostrum and tail and they lack any spots or stripes on that tail fan that you see i think they're really really beautiful and super fascinating shrimp in an aquarium you would want to maintain them in a really neutral to soft environment definitely no heater and in my aquarium i utilize softening substrate in this case tropica in order to provide a neutral environment you could certainly use RO water or something like collected rainwater if you didn't have that sort of substrate. Um, they will certainly fail to thrive in a pH over about 7.2 to 7.4 and definitely do not like the warmer temperatures. Now similar to most freshwater dwarf shrimp, they breed in the typical fashion and the females will carry the eggs that then hatch into miniature versions of the adults. Because of this, it's really important to make sure that you have them in an aquarium filtration that won't suck up the baby shrimp as they're super tiny. My preference is for sponge filtration. They do really, really well with areas of thick moss. And if you've noticed in that uh, underwater footage that I showed you, the one collection point actually for once had a lot of thick moss underwater. Uh, in my aquarium, I like to give them lots of botanicals because you'll find that in the wild, things like leaves and pods or even driftwood, as well as areas of dense planting. All of these things provide lots and lots of surfaces for them to graze on and the more natural feeding behavior. One of the biggest problems with dwarf shrimp is overfeeding, causing instability in generally small aquariums. So utilizing these various means is a much more natural way to feed them and prevent swings of parameters. They are absolutely intolerant to any ammonia or nitrite, and nitrates should be kept relatively low. I really hope you guys have enjoyed seeing these shrimp. I personally am a massive fan of all the wild type shrimp, but I wanna hear from you guys. Are you working with any of them? Which are your favorite? What should I try and get next as far as a wild type shrimp to work with in my fish room? As always, please make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the updates on all of the projects and things going on down here in the fish room.